basically what Dan Tuss saying, man, like that, um, ho- that Southern hospitality, you know, we got to rebrand it. It's African hospitality. Absolutely. That's what it is, man. Absolutely. You know, that's yeah. going to be, that's going to be the name of this episode. African hospitality, man. It's, it's out of this world, man. So right. like. Welcome to the Journey Home Africa podcast, where we help you take the journey home. A lot of people are taking the journey to West Africa and making it their second home. And we're here to help in the process. We share our experience living in West Africa for over six years through all the ups and downs and why we decided to stay. Make sure you subscribe and follow us at Journey Home Festival on all social media platforms. Welcome back to the Journey Home Africa podcast. I'm your host, Sakar Aha. I am Denta Raye. And uh, welcome again. This uh, podcast is to help those in the diaspora African Americans, Black Americans that want to make the journey back home to Africa. And in this episode, we kind of want to talk about just taking a trip. You know, at least take your first trip. The reason I think that that is so important because. I believe Africa is magnetic. The reason I say that is because in our own experience, when we first traveled in 2017, we made the connection to Senegal and the Gambia. And man, I love this so much, we missed the flight. (laughs) When we were in Gambia, we were, uh, because it was 10 days, a 10 day trip. Um, I think the most of it was in the Gambia, right? I think the, the, the yeah, same. the majority of it was in the Gambia. Yeah, and then on the way, the day we were supposed to be packing up and getting ready to go to catch a flight back to Dakar, I was like, man, I don't want to go, I don't want to go, and hey, man, we missed the flight, <laughs> which opened up a whole nother can of worms because now we had to drive back, we had to take the road back and the road and the ferry back, which was just like another amazing experience, but. The point is, is that when we got back to the United States, it was like every waking moment we were thinking about how can we get back to Africa? How can we get, how can we get back home? What do you, what do you think, Densa? I mean, you know, I'm, I was I was there. I was back there in the time because I remember when we was talking like, yo, if we, if we don't move. I remember saying to you, like, if we don't move like now, we're going to miss our flight. So, yeah, but I don't really want to go back. And I'm like, yo, this dude is, you know, you, you, you got like protect what you say or be, be careful what you say because when we got to the airport, you know, we we finally at the airport and we trying to get, you know, we moving fast now to try to make the flight like normal. Like every time, you know, you get to the airport, it's like, okay, it's time to move in an aggressive manner to get on your flight. To, you know what I mean? But then when we got there, the flight was gone. <laughs> Everything we tried to do, it, it was gone. And yeah. Uh, uh, we had to take a ferry, and that was an, an experience within itself because that was the first time I've been on a ferry like that. Like, you know, I've been on a ferry in the, in the United States, but this particular ferry was Jumanji. Like, you know, the, once the doors open, you saw cows, you saw chicken, you saw all types of animals coming off of it. Then you had the cars that was there. It was just like an, an, another level of, of an experience, meaning everything just fit. It, it wasn't nothing that was forced. You follow what I'm saying? So it wasn't like so stringent that animals was on there along with the people, along with the cars. Exactly. It was just like everything just made sense. And then when we was on the water, it was like a, like a whole nother experience. Like you're like, damn, this is beautiful. Like you could see the stars on a whole nother level. You know, you could you feel the wind, you know, on, on your skin while you're on the water. It was just another level of an experience so taking a trip is definitely necessary i feel like there should be you know organizations that that because it's expensive i feel like you know there should be organizations that that create an opportunity for people to take a trip and kind of pay down the ticket actually they are okay yeah they are okay. um you gotta google it you probably want to google it a little bit uh there are actually in every state well they got trade missions that that can help Right. But there are literally there is we got to look it up and then get that information for you guys, because I think it was I think it was Toyin that told me about it. It was Toyin that told me about it. They also have it for students. But, yeah, there's actually there are actually organizations. We were talking to some company then at one point that they were trying to link us with that organization that does fun trips 
for people that want to make their first trip to Africa. So it exists. You know, another thing is that, you know, uh, you know, you want to start at the end of the day, it's a sacrifice. Right. And I learned that the hard way, because when we were first talking about that first trip that we made, I really didn't want to make it because we were so involved in so many other projects because, you know, we have a real estate business. We were doing construction on a plethora of projects. We also have an entertainment company. So it was like, you know, managing all of those things. I just didn't know how we were going to, you know, be able to like, you know, budget out the amount of money needed to go. Right. But at the end of the day, it's an investment. It's a sacrifice and an investment, just like anything else. Like, you know, when you decide, you, you know, I'm going to take 10,000 and put it into this real estate deal. or I'm going to take 10,000 and put it into these, these, um, this, uh, these mutual funds or whatever, and let it sit or whatever. That's, that's 10,000 that you can't now spend on a car or you can't spend on clothes. So it's a sacrifice, but at the same time, it's an investment. So like, and if you don't make the investment, if you don't make the sacrifice, you don't reap the benefits, you know, and that's what I learned, you know, because once we did, it was like, you know, a whole nother world opened up to us. I mean, even on that ferry, I remember networking with a guy that was a contractor because, you know, there's a lot of development going on in the Gambia. I'm sure way more since I've been there because that was 2017. But I remember networking and linking with a guy that was a that was a developer right there. You know, I think he was sitting in his car, right? Exactly. <laughs> he was sitting in his car. You know, we were standing. I didn't, I didn't want to sit in the car. I wanted to, you know, embrace the whole experience. But yeah, so like, it's important to take that first trip you know, um, you know, by any means, you know, because especially, you know, we see what's going on now. We we just happen to be recording this this podcast today on November 5th, the day of the election. So you can see, you know, there was a uh, LeVon Ball. Uh, he's a, I guess, ex football player turned boxer, something like that. He was like, man, if Kamala gets elected, I'm leaving the country. You got people on both sides saying that. You got people wow. saying if Trump gets elected, right? You know, it's like people are like, you got some people saying no matter what happens, I'm getting elected. Matter of fact, I saw in, I think it was Forbes, it's in, I'll try, I'll find a link for you guys, but it was basically, it was millennials, million, um, millen, a million, m- millennials with a net worth of a, of million do- of a million dollars plus were leaving the country, hmm. period. That they were like, they saw the highest Pike, um, uh, spike in was it millennials? Yeah, I think it's millennials. It might even been Gen, it might have been even one of the, it might have been like Gen Z. Crazy. So I get it, but the point is, is that people are like, yo, we out. <laughs> and you know, and that's that's a, that's an interesting, that's an interesting thought process because if you think about it, um, there's, there's never been a time like this before where you know, um, so much people are leaving and you know, coming to Africa should be something that we should be thinking about on 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 a, on a, um, a very specific note like going to Mexico, going to Panama, going to, you know, Puerto Rico or any one of the Caribbeans is 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 a beautiful situation. I'm not saying no don't do that. However, I think coming to Africa whether you come to Kenya, Tanzania, Tanzania Uganda, or Liberia, I'm gonna be unbiased for for about Liberia. Why? Because of the um, narrative of Liberia being founded in 1820, 1821, when the ex-slaves came and became a became a sovereign country in 1847. Is like you know that to me that's just like wow because because of ACS, you know African Americans could say well you know I have a, I have a country on the continent. You know what I mean, and and you know it's just a beautiful thing. So it's like you know coming to coming to Africa is it it, it should be something that is uh, really concentrated on, right. and uh, um that that should be like a, a concentrated effort, you know that for 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 Gen Zs, millennials, exactly, you know whomever to to, to, to definitely um benefit in you know because is not only is it a as a as a sacrifice but it's like. The thought process should be like, you know, how do I get to Africa? Because there's so much to do when you come to Africa. Like, you know, coming coming to Africa, first and foremost, I got to say, there's a stress level that comes off your shoulders that's like you will feel like never before. Facts. It's kind of like euphoric because we, it's, you, you just you just like, oh, wow, nah, I'm not, I, don't, I don't have to stress. This, this, I don't know how to explain it. It's like the stress, there's a level of stress that comes off of your body 
off of your mind. And it, and it happens after the second day. The first day, you know, you're at shock. But the, I think the second to third day when you wake up, whether you're in a hotel or wherever you're at, you're, you're, you're like, okay, there's a norm, there's a normalcy from being in the States that you, you automatically feel like, okay, this is not, I'm not there, and you ain't got to worry about bills. Like, Bill is not, is not here like it is there. I don't know what they call him over here, <laughs> but it ain't, it ain't like it's over there. You know, and it's like, you know, it's, 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 it's very interesting. So, but there's so much to do. You know, there's so much to do and so much opportunity. The way I look at it is like one big canvas with so much to do. And, and it's like whatever your, your mind conceives, it, you could actually achieve here. Exactly, exactly. And, and remember, keep in mind when we say sacrifice, I'm definitely talking about that first initial amount of monies that you're going to put into coming over here you know that's so so you know because again like you know that first trip that 10 day trip might be like you know it might be you know a f i would say like 7500 you know i would i would be prepared to put aside so and oh and that's for two people that's for two people one person i think five five is good you know i think two people you know whether you and a friend you and a partner you and a, a significant other i think you know you're looking at maybe like 7500 to 10000 would be a good amount of money it'll allow you to get out here it'll allow you to you know you know one you know possibly you know open your business if that's something that you looking to do it'll allow you to be able to make sure you kind of take part and see a lot of the country not just the tourist sites but you know actually you know events etc but i think that's a good dollar amount but we could we could come back and talk about that but and that that goes into what's there to do in africa like denta was saying man it's everything out here man you could do man like look internet is strong you know i have no problem with the internet i mean you know the only thing i would say is with like was it the upload speeds i would say you know just depends on like who you get your packages from but look starlink is coming to liberia i'm sure i'm sure i mean yeah they've already signed the contracts and you remember dr cool i was talking to us about you know opening up her, up her account and stuff like that so i think yeah, shout out to yeah, dr. Cool. yeah i think starlink is is i mean that's that's about to launch here and i'm sure you know it's already in, in in a multitude of other countries but just even the orange and the you know orange is is big around west africa and mtn obviously is big also those are the big cellular agencies and stuff like that but there's really not that much of a problem i would say i would say sometimes the download might take a little long but nobody like when i'm on zoom you know unless there's a power outage right you know if, unless there's a power outage and really we haven't been experiencing that much of that so look when it comes to like even um the power going in and out like in li liberia and again liberia would be considered like what probably the poorest of most of the west african countries right or probably the poorest on the continent i'm thinking it's in the bottom tier and electricity is on i would say like 85 percent of the time you know what i'm talking about i right. don't think i don't think that's bad at all for you know what i'm saying so the reason i bring that up is because everything man from from video gaming you know to you know working remotely which a lot of people are doing these days you're able to do that right from here you know what i'm saying going to the restaurants so many different types of restaurants that you go to as far as food because you have a, a multitude of different races here in reference to Leb the, the lebanese chinese of course african you know but then you know the, the 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 dishes at any given time you can have a different type of dish and, and really um engulf yourself into that dish for the week you know what i'm saying so you can have i mean it, it just it, the choice is just of, of options you have when it comes to food is, is really is really great here yeah definitely and even if you just cook your own stuff you know send send somebody to the market go to the market you know i mean of course the i think the first you want to experience it you know but then after that, you might want to send somebody, you know, because they probably get the best prices. You know what I'm talking about? Right. That's a fact. <laughs> I don't know if anybody from, you know, you know, tapped in that's like in Ghana can like uh, second it. But, you know, from people I've spoke to, it's kind of the similar thing. They see you, you know, your, the prices go up. Right. But you can still negotiate. Like at the end of the day, if you're a good negotiator, you could bring the prices right down to where they're supposed to be. Absolutely. But, but, but or it, even it, get a deal. Exa exactly. It, but it takes time. You know, you got to understand the culture and stuff like that. But 
you know and it just depends on how you know traveled you are because again like to me coming to liberia was not that much different than the transition i made from jersey to atlanta interesting but, but, yeah believe it or not because like look the the culture to me growing up i was 20 what was i uh, 23 i was 25 so i was fully fully a jersey city you know new york city type of person you know meaning my, from everything from my um, vernacular to the way i walk talk everything 25 years had never been out of you know i mean maybe maybe for a couple of weeks i might i think i went to miami you know once or twice and i went to virginia beach once or twice every other t everything else was i was in jersey or in new york so coming to atlanta was a in 2002 when you know this was before a lot of the you know other people kind of converged on into Atlanta, right? So it was a huge culture shock for me, like I mean, from, it's, it's from the from mm -hmm. the lingo and everything. So it, it that's not much different than what I am what 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 I felt when I got to Liberia, having to adjust to right. the 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 nuance of the language because they speak in English, right? You know, so now you just gotta kind of adjust the same thing. They were speaking English in Atlanta, but right, I, right. I didn't quite understand it. You sure, know? she, 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 <laughs> you know? sure. You know, so <laughs> so yeah. Go ahead. You was about to say something. No, no. You 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 struck a chord when you said that because uh, um, it was definitely a culture shock for myself when I came, when I left from um the United States. No, the United States. When I left from uh, uh what is it? What was it? Uh, Boston? Uh, no, no uh, uh, New York, Connecticut, Connecticut. Because I was in Connecticut. You know, being from Brooklyn and going to Boston. It was it, it it became like a more conservative vibe, like you know, being like you know, uh, in 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 the boroughs of New York, it was like you know, you you have so many different Caribbean people there, you know, from Jamaicans to, to Puerto Ricans uh, uh, to 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 all type of Caribbean. You find a lot of Caribbean uh, culture in Brooklyn, and then when I went to Boston, I was in Boston for some time, and then it was like really conservative, uppity. You see a lot of white people. And then, you know, from Boston, you know. That's interesting. I never asked you. Was it a big uh, culture change from going from New York City to Boston? Well, that's or was it very similar? Well, yeah, well, when you're, in, when you're in Manhattan or in various, you know, working class areas, you see a lot of white people. Right. But in the city of New York, when you're in Brooklyn, yeah. you don't see a lot of white people. Okay. It's like you see a lot of Caribbean people. You'll, you'll see okay. white folks from here to there. Like, if you, you have to go to a certain part of Brooklyn to huh. see a lot of white people. If you're on Eastern Parkway, you see the the, 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 the Hasidic Jews. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you, you, you see them around. But as far as the functioning of the daily, you either see the Chinese people, Puerto Rican, Jamaican, you know, Haitian, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. that, that's just like your every day, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you go to the supermarket, that's your every day. Mm -hmm. But if you go to a certain part of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. you'll find yourself seeing Jews. Okay. You follow what I'm saying? The Hasidic Jews or regular Jewish people. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But if you go to Manhattan, that's when you see a, a plethora yeah, of different, you definitely. follow what I'm saying? So definitely. now when going to Boston, uh -huh. you get on the train, you're seeing all types of white people. You okay. follow what I'm saying? It was just like more conservative and uppity. But when okay. you were in the neighborhood, it was, it was uh, um, even then, when they come into your neighborhood, far as the police officers or the um, different utility people, it'd be white people. Mm -hmm. You follow what I'm saying? So that was that that was a, a interesting shock. What, what was the Black American or the African American swag like? You know, in comparison to uh, New it wasn't York City? it was it was just this African American. It wasn't okay. as Caribbean. You follow what I'm saying? Oh, gotcha. You, 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 gotcha. It wasn't as Caribbean. Okay. You, you wouldn't find like you know okay. uh, um, a lot of the sectors of Caribbean. So when I was in Boston, I found myself having finding a pocket. Okay. Of other people from Haiti, okay. you follow what I'm saying. As young teenagers, you follow what I'm saying to okay. to hang out with, but but everybody else was strictly straight African Americans. You Got follow it. what I'm saying. So so they they probably had ties to the South even. Okay. You follow what I'm saying. But they were more so strict Af African Americans. So you wouldn't even have to you would you wouldn't even have to. Uh, um, I, I, I'm trying to think hard. Like where where would where would you find pockets of Jamaicans? You probably have to go to another side of town, and uh, um, on Blue Hill Ave. Uh, Roxbury, where you'll find pockets mm -hmm. of Jamaicans. You follow what I'm saying? So it'll be like pockets where you'll find different Caribbean, but the majority is African American. So, what well, was the slang the same? Like, uh, like uh, from Brooklyn to 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 Boston? Nah, uh, okay. the, the 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 slang in Boston uh, um, is 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 more like a, a Irish type of talk. Okay, so you know what I mean? Even with the so that, that's the accent. That's and the, the, the accent. That's the Got accent. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So even even yeah. with in the in the neighborhood, <laughs> yeah. you'll find cats yeah. talking super 
proper yeah, yeah, Irish. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. With the, get out the car. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> nah, get out the car now. Yeah. So it's like you 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 you'll find that on a daily basis. Yeah. You follow what I'm saying? So, but then when you get to Connecticut, uh -huh. you back to the Caribbean again. You oh, know wow. what I'm saying? Okay. It's like okay. you know, in Harford, okay. it was nothing but Caribbean. A lot okay. of Jamaicans more so. Right. So like Harford, okay. for me, it was like more so Jamaican than anything else. Okay. Like you know, you probably find some Trini, mm -hmm. some some Panamanian, but the the the, the Jamaican inf influence is like really heavy in Harford. You follow okay. what I'm saying? Okay. So so, but by the time I got to the South. Yeah, it was just very interesting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I mean, like I wasn't like in a whole nother world. Definitely. You know what I mean? As far you as gotta definitely, I mean the, the Caribbean is there, but you got to find them. Like it took a minute before. You know? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, so, so by the time you you speaking to people, yeah. with that that have that southern draw, yeah. you know that southern hospitality. And when I got there in '98, you know, um, I remember I got on a bus, and um, the lady that was the lady, the first lady I saw walking on the bus. Not even a driver, the, the the lady behind the driver. Hey, how you doing? Mm -hmm. And I I look back. Who you to, to see if if she was talking to the person behind me? Right. But she was talking to me like I knew her yeah, for yeah, years. Yeah, 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 so that that definitely. southern hospitality yeah, when it yeah, hit me, yeah, it hit me with a yeah, with a shock. Yeah. You follow yeah. what I'm saying? Because I, I, remember, I remember one time I'm um a girl. I was at Publix, and um she was like. You need a ride? I was like, what? You know what I'm talking about? Like, I was like, what? Yeah. I ain't never, I'm, I'm like, yeah, she must like me. She ain't like me. She ain't <laughs> get, I'm going to be honest, she didn't give me a number after, you know, so I tried to get a number and everything. I'm like, oh, she must have liked me. Nah, it was just literally. That, that, that Southern hospitality. Yo, and, I, it, yeah. and what's so interesting about that is, you know, uh, um, um, it, it was a shock because being from up north, Brooklyn, going to Boston, Connecticut, it's cold. The, the 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 temperature is so cold there you know meaning how people treat you you know oh, yeah. um the, the oh. how they how they care about oh, you i thought you was talking about the weather i yeah, forgot yeah. i forgot the pe that's the people yeah that's the people you're you know about, what i'm saying you're talking about the temperature of the people the temperature of the people Ooh. so it's like but when you got to to the south right it it it, it, it warmed you up it oh, makes man. you want to even smile yeah you know what i'm saying it makes you even want to put a smile on your face so when we got to africa it, it was on steroids. Yeah, times a thousand. Man, everybody's times, telling you you're welcome. Times a thousand. And I, you know what I mean? And it's like you're welcome without some, having to say thank you. You welcome. Some, I felt like something started happening in Georgia. You remember I was telling you I was having a, a call with uh, the battle rapper Sid Vicious the other day. Right, right. And, Peace, uh, Sid. Yeah. And I was telling him, man, like when I would leave Georgia, because you know at first one I didn't like it because you know I was coming from up north. I wanted to be up north. Right. I, actually, I actually went down south because I had to go down south, right? But it was the best thing that could have ever happened to me in retrospect, right? But um, I didn't, I didn't, re you know. But again, I had to adjust, etc. And uh, but then at some point, so at some point, I started liking being in the south, right? Because obviously everything started popping, you know. Now, two thousand five, right, 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 and just all of the, you know, cheesy, like you know the. And then I'm in, I'm already like a music, you know, uh, you know, into music, so. It just, you know, it was like, wow, I'm in the right place now, right? But then something happened where I don't know, man. Like, I, you know, it could have been personal experiences, you know, probably was. But something happened where I just no longer wanted to be in Georgia. Something kind of, it felt like the energy shifted. And, it, and, and a lot of it could have been, um, it could have been the people moving, you know, because everybody, we, you know, we put the, with the alert, we put the spotlight on Atlanta, right? Everybody telling you, calling back home, telling everybody they're seeing the video and stuff like that. There was already a lot of people coming to Atlanta for like, you know, events, Jack the Rapper, Freak Nick, so on and so forth. So now I think that might have changed the, you know, the, the vibe of Atlanta, but it just became something different. So right. coming back, coming here was like, you know, I would say South Carolina, I right. kind of likened the vi the vibe in the Gambia like South Carolina because again, you know, in South Carolina, it's still it's still a lot of love there, right? right. We was in Florence, Man. you know what I'm saying. So this is still now. This is like 2014 when I'm not feeling the same vibe in Atlanta anymore. Personally, I'm feeling like it's a little colder now in Atlanta than it used to be. But then, like when you go to areas like Florence, South Carolina. You know what I'm saying? Sumter and, you know, the Black Bike Fest and all that. The vibe to me was 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 what like I felt before in Atlanta. Right. So so the only thing I could really liken the Gambia to, I kept comparing it to South Carolina because I like that vibe so much. You know what I'm saying? So again, like like basically what Denta is saying, man, like that um 
that southern hospitality you know we got to rebrand it it's african hospitality absolutely that's what it is man absolutely you know that's yeah. gonna be that's gonna be the name of this episode african hospitality man it's it's out of this world man so right. like that's what be killing me you know that's what kills me when i'm on like you know we jump on clubhouse and stuff like that you know and when you know whenever you're on there definitely check us out we got the journey home africa club or whatever on there right but you know we jump you know it's always these guys arguing I, I, to me I think it's federal government <laughs> you know I'm gonna be honest the same way that you know they penetrate the black organizations COINTELPRO in order to you know stop the growth of you know the African American or to you know make sure that there's no black messiah y'all know that whole concept it's the same thing of us reconnecting because you gotta remember before they started really you know hitting us with all of this media you get what i'm talking about before we started getting hit with the music and the movies the way they started really drugging our mind through through well through entertainment and you know when they started the chemical warfare against us in america it was a big thing to connect with african culture right like, you know so like me going back you know so i like listening to kwame toure uh who was also stokely. known as stokely um carmichael right right um and and you know and i didn't even know like the type this dude he was in guinea you know he was back and forth he was um learning from kwame and kruma he was learning from seku toure and that's why he got the name kwame toure because he took one name from both of those african pan-african leaders that were on the continent that were equivalent to our martin luther kings and malcolm x's right, right? that they were moving you know France and the colonial powers out of Africa, like you know, they didn't. They, come on, they didn't want us to connect with that energy, man. No, 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 no. Come on, man. They didn't want to say it. So, so when I'm on these platforms and I hear people talking about, oh, Africans don't want you, man. That's the listen, man. We've been here for going on seven years now. Going on seven years. January makes seven years. I, I've never that that right there is not a problem. You know, I can name a lot of other problems. <laughs> right. You know, but that's that one's not going to be one. That's right, that right. one's not going to be one. And that's interesting you bring that up. Like wow, because you know Harlem, you know um, Harlem had a touch of that. Oh. Because uh, uh, a lot oh. of uh, a lot of these guys. Man, that was my favorite place, man. Right, right, yeah, right. that was my favorite. Go ahead, go you ahead. Know, when you went when you went to Harlem, it made you feel warm. Oh man. And then and then, and then, and then when you think about you know the the, the Pan Africanism, the, the that whole thought process. It, it, it was really, it was really in, 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 in ingrained in Harlem. So it's just interesting to have that these these type of thought process because when when you come to Africa, what you're gonna find is you're gonna you're gonna find a lot of opportunity, and and some of the opportunities that's there is you know business. Definitely. And you know, and when when, when dealing with businesses, you know, like for case in point, if you if you're into real estate, which is which is a part of our wheelhouse, you know, you could create so much. You know, um, opportunity. Yeah. When it comes to real estate here, because the dollar is like you know one uh, um, American dollar, United States dollar is equivalent to almost two hundred dollars here of the Liberian dollar. And what does that mean? Well, you know, when you have a house or an apartment and you want to rent it out, you could rent it out for like the same as a nine hundred dollars. You can start at between five hundred dollars. Nine hundred dollars, and the beauty of it is, you you they're gonna you you they could pay you for the whole year, or you could request U S dollars. By the could, way, yeah, that's U S dollars. You could request for your for your payment for the whole year. You know they call it per annum. You know, and and what what's interesting about that is, you know, uh, uh, once you own your property here, you don't have to worry about you know taxes, or or, or you know of course you want to have insurance and stuff like that, but you don't have to worry about that stuff. You don't have to worry about a, a monthly mortgage, you know. You, once you own your property, you own your property. So it's just like a different uh, uh, level of wealth that's here. Definitely. And then you're able to generate generational wealth because, say, if you have your children here, you build, say, an apartment complex. An apartment complex have, say, 50 to 100 doors. And you got people paying you between $500 to $1,000 a month. But you're getting it paid per annum, you know. So it's, it's just a whole nother level. The, the, the wealth is different, you know, because it's not so much credit bound here. Everything you have, you own, which is which is something that is interesting because I was like, oh, well, you know, why, why not have credit? Why not? Why, 
but it's it's different. And the difference of it, you 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 really learn to like it and respect it because whatever you have, you own. You know right. what I mean? You ain't got to worry about no repo man coming to take. Exactly. Now they, they might they might switch it up. They might uh, um, you know put that there as a convenience for people. Well, but, you know, it's, it's coming. Like, you got, you know, but right now, like, the interest rates, like, if you, like, at least in Liberia, if you take a loan out on the property, it, it would be like a hard money loan. Like, in America, like, a hard money loan. Go, when 15%? You go, yeah, man, 13 to 18. I right. think they were, right? It was, I think it was at 18 when we were, ta- because we were discussing doing a project here. Right. Was it 15 or 18? I think it was at 15%, but it goes as high as 18%. You know? You follow what I'm saying? Based on, if you, if it's like, how, I think, about how they balloon it, or it, it, it goes higher from 50. It starts at 15, but it can go higher. So it's, he, it's here, but it's it's crippling. <laughs> like, you know, you know so, and I think the people realize that too. So they, so they rather deal with the susu, which is the real, the real susu now. Not not the not the bogus thing that was going on in in the, what's going on though that uh, I don't hear nothing about that susu no more, bro. You know, that was, susus, it was it was it was a rush. <laughs> Yo. It was a rush, and I think as quick as it came, I tried the war cats. I tried the war cat. I was def- I was telling them I was like, "Yo, that's not a susu." <laughs> I was telling people, yo, that's not a susu, man. It was definitely man. a rush. Like, yo, but cat people want people just looking for that quick. And look, you know, I don't want to say you can't make money quickly. You can make money quickly, but you, but you, but you know, you still gotta have some sort of. It gotta be. There has to be some sort of skill set involved. Somebody gotta have some sort of skill set. It was definitely there's gotta a rush. be. There's gotta be some value there. Yo, it's not just man. Come on, man. It was definitely. It a was rush. a rush. And then so, whoever got them last people. The black, because the people on top that was taking the money, right? You know what I'm talking about. The people on top, and then, then okay, now you put your money in, and now you know you got got. So now you got to get somebody to get your money back. Right. <laughs> it just became. And that's Ooh. what it was. But Ooh. here they have a very interesting way of doing things. Uh, um, with the susu, basically you putting your money in, and then you get your money back out at the end of the year. And it's it's no, it's a no interest loan at right. the end of the day. Like right. you know, ten of us, we put just say a thousand dollars in. You know what I'm talking about, and then what happens is, you know, they let me if they let me ten thousand, right? Then I have, you know, every month you're paying it back, right? right. You know, so you're paying back your whatever your let's say twelve thousand because that means you're obligated to make a um, a payment of of a thousand dollars per month over the course of twelve months. Right. So that means if you if you um you know so and then it just depends who can get their loan earlier or right. get there because it's really still your money because you're obligated to pay your thousand right. dollars so in month month three you might be able to pull down your entire twelve thousand so now what happens is it allows you it's a loan it's still people helping you because now you got access to that twelve thousand right now right. to go ahead and jump start a business as long as you continue to pay your thousand dollars month four five through 12 you know what i'm saying so and then then everybody else gets that same opportunity you know i guess except then you know some people get i guess the person that gave me the last i don't know how that works but you know but we did it successfully and it was a good look it was it really was and the thing about it is you know that's just that's just one real estate and is this one is this one of many things because transportation it's like a, um, it's just so many different levels and layers when it comes to transportation. Man. You know, so many different levels and layers. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about like transporting human beings from one place to another. Then you have transporting food from the interior to the mainland. Then you have transporting goods, far as like, you know, wood, far as uh, um, d- like dry goods and mm-hmm. things of that nature from one part of the country to the other part of the country. Then you have, uh, um, you know, uh, Import export. It's like when it, the the businesses. The when it comes to the businesses, if you have a business mind, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, if you have that type of mindset, you know, you could definitely come in and 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 make and make you know wonders happen. If you are a worker bee and you just want to get get into a situation where you want to come and 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 bring, you know, your skill set from from whatever job you've you've been a part of in the United States, you definitely could do that here Facts. as well. You just get with other, you know minds that understand the fact that you're coming from the, the states and you have a skill set to bring in for management and things of that nature and you could you definitely could be utilizing and 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 and, 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 then, and it's very needed it's very much so needed yeah, yeah and even as a uh, somebody coming in offering um you know coming in as an employee look your your value is t- definitely times 10 over here now i'm not saying that you're going to get paid 10 times the amount that you're worth right but still your value like one you'll be able to see how you can 
life. You can actually contribute to, you know, your profession. You know, you'll see immediate effects of that. One, two, you know, chances are you bring a different perspective to your profession that would be, you know, different than, you know, some of the average Liberian, you know, even a, a Liberian or a Ghanaian that's, you know, um, schooled in America and comes back. You as an African American or, or Haitian American, Jamaican American, you still going to see it from a different perspective so you can offer so much value. And we, we know a sister, um, I think her name is Annabelle, who was a uh, part of the, the, what's it? Yeah, that's her name. Part of the um, year of return in Ghana. So she's actually one of the head organizers and she's African American. And she actually got the job by sending in her resume. So it was really, it really hit me because, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for 20, I think one years, right? Or 20 years, about 20, 21 years, 22, 21 years. So it's been, a, so I don't really talk too much about having a job. But one time she jumped on our clubhouse and she just started talking about, you know, the fact that, hey, she submitted her application. <laughs> <laughs> and look, 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 and look, the year of return is like one of the biggest, that's an internationally recognized, you know, platform. $1.9 billion. You know? That's all I can say. You know? And then, and then doing, and then like, so say for instance, like when you first get here, you know, you stay, you continue doing what you're doing in the States, you're working remotely. There's a bunch of tools, you know, um, we, you know, VPN obviously is like, a big important you know piece for us because you know you can't go on you know even netflix if you want to watch certain movies on netflix that's released in america if you don't got your vpn on you can't watch it right yep, you facts. know certain banks won't let you log into the website i mean it's your bank account you're on vacation or whatever you're staying here for an extended stay you should be able to have access to your account to be able to transfer money around you need that vpn to do it so i would definitely advise we use express vpn i mean these they're not no sponsor of what we do or whatever but i just know that it's been a, a huge tool for us to be able to you know do whatever we need and then and then you want to get with certain banks like like you know right now I'm, I'm loving mercury you know i'm loving mercury right you know mercury is a is a um online you know bank that you know has been to me you know like you don't get charged overdraft fees uh, i think that's like a big thing for you know us and you know um and entrepreneurs like you know especially getting started out they don't charge overdraft fees so um and they you know business banking you know so you can access it anywhere in the world i don't even need to have my vpn on when i'm using my mercury account so i love I, you know I, I think that's another good one and then you know you guys, you know, want to probably start doing things in the name of an LLC because that's something that's really been able to help us as well. Because say, for instance, you know, you're in real estate and you're doing some projects or, you know, and you have to sign a loan. Right. Or you have to, you know, or you refinance, you know, a loan on your property. Right. And you don't want to take the travel back or you don't want to go to the embassy and pay exorbitant notary fees because right. at the embassy it's like fifty dollars a notary right? right a stamp a stamp you know so you know you already know you're closing a loan that's 10 stamps so the beauty about um you know having an llc you could do a corporate resolution right you know so it's, it's you know so we want to touch on a little a couple of the, the things that we do but definitely tap in you know, I don't think we can go into all of it on right. this on this call, but you could definitely inbox, you know, and we can, you know, walk you through on some of the different tools and, and what we've been able to do because we still operate our businesses in the States. As Den, as Den Tut said, we have real estate properties. We also have live events that we produce in the States, and we've been able to gratefully do it right from here. And the reason when I, I when I said 1.9 billion, I had to go back to that so I can make it clear to the listeners. 1.9 billion is is, is what uh, Ghana was able to uh, acquire through the year of return. So when it comes to entertainment, entertainment is a is a definitely a great field that you could come and and create you know shows and different productions, and you know the people here will gravitate towards towards it as well as it, it it'll generate tourism. And tourism is de definitely another way of creating, you know, um, value here on, on, on the continent. And then, you know, uh, uh, women, you know, when it comes to the sisters, there's, there's a beauty salon. You know, there's, there is no franchise 
that I've, that I've seen or recognized or, or, or noticed, but there is no franchise that's there. So you can either open up a school, a beauty school, you know, that would generate a lot of money. Well, you could open up a regular school. Yeah, I was definitely, you know I, was de- I wanted to, de- man, listen, the school is a big business here. And then, you know, because there is no, it's no public, there's no, I mean, they do have a couple of public schools, you know, depending on the country you're in, where the, the, the government pays the school fees, but, or pays the teachers. But here, most of the schools in Liberia are basically private what like our private schools in america you pay for your student you pay for them you pay for their uniform you pay for everything and those fees that you pay in are what pay the teachers and allow that business that school business to function and it is and not only is not only to me is that an incredible opportunity but i also think it's a way for us to bring massive amounts of value you know as you know teachers like you could be a teacher that says hey because you know you could set the curri- curriculum up on a certain level right that could be above maybe the standard right you know so it, look it's just the, the school but i just wanted to tap in on that one that's up man schools are definitely an, a, a great opportunity and you're also bringing so much value and so much that you can do of course when you're educating our youth Absolutely, and, and, and again, it's lucrative. Like it's not just something that you're just doing, and you know the monies don't come from it. You oh know, some people, gosh. some people do it just because they love to be able to educate and you know the children and everything else. But you have to imagine, you know, um, say two children, you you might you might have you might get paid a hundred and twenty dollars um, for two children, and that's just I guess I think the first semester. Then another hundred and twenty dollars for another for the same two children for the second semester. So like if you have a um, you got you got schools that are thousand dollars for the year, man. You understand what I'm so, saying? So, so if you got a hundred students, man, you feel me? So that's, that's a hundred thousand dollars, right? Exactly. So you know, my point is, it's, it's very lucrative. It's a very lucrative situation. And then it, the the same method is transferred when it comes to like you know uh, a beauty salon. No, not beauty salon, but a beauty school. Exactly. You know, in a beauty school, you know, that, that's something that could, you know, uh, produce salons out here that's on a professional level. And I, and I say that to the sisters because, you know, I don't, I don't know who's listening. But, Shoot, then, it, it, you know, but, but you right. know, if you are if you are a stylist and you're hearing this in South Carolina or you're hearing this from Atlanta or you're hearing this in California, and I know that your sisters, y'all love your hairdo, and they love their hairdos here. Definitely. It becomes a situation where you could bring value by open up in the, open up opening a school and from opening a school you open up a franchise of beauty salons from all different areas because it's it's it's, it's, it's lacking it's, it's there but it's not really there on a on a standard you know what I'm saying and then you could bring that standard you know as, as well as the beauty products that comes along with it you know what I'm saying and then there's a lot, there's, a, there's a lot of you know um african Beauty products and African American beauty products. That's that's an from um, um, definitely producers from America. Definitely, that's making products and stuff like and, that and, and, that could be introduced into and, the market. And think about it, the um, ingredients are coming from where? <laughs> right here, like you know, no. Palm. Right, you know, you got the guy. What's the brother name that just bought Revolt TV? He made his millions. I mean, probably tens of millions, maybe hundreds, because the guy did just buy Revolt TV. Right. Reginald Dennis, right? Re- Reginald A Liberian. Liberian. He also bought Essence Magazine. He's now the guy that's actually in, basically in charge of the Essence Festival. And he made his original money from Palm. Right. You know, which is like, I'm talking about Palm is out here like... Or acorns in America, you know what I'm saying? In Facts. New York and Jersey, Damn. something like yeah. that. I don't know. Hit that right on the nose. Like, it's out here, like man. Acorns, and, and, acorns and, and, in America, and that's wow. the major um, ingredient in uh, most of these, um, you know, lotions and right. you know, etc. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so it's a lot, guys. You know, and we're here to help you take that journey. You know, um, definitely DM us on on any level. You know, yep. um, at, at Journey Home Festival on Instagram, Facebook. At Journey Home Festival, definitely. Let's stay in contact. Let's the, let's let's make this a tribe. You know, you Facts. know, there's, there's there's a lot of tribes around. You you know, you, you, so whether whether it's a food tribe or a clothing tribe or whatever. Let's make this a tribe, man, and let's understand how to make this trip. Let's 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 create. Let's find let's find ways to to fund the trip. Let's find ways to fund the business within the trip. Mm-hmm. Because in my mind, my mindset is. 
yeah, come and visit and enjoy yourself, but why not come and visit and also establish a business? Because what you're going to do is you're going to employ people, which is going to help their family, and they're going to stay there. They're going to stay dedicated to you. And another, I have to say this: whoever you employ here, that's their job for life. I don't know how that ring in, in your ear when you hear that, but whoever you employ, and you, you're taking care of them, and it's something that's stable. And it, and, it's, and it has sustainability and and, and, and it's sufficient and and, and it, they they ain't going they're not going nowhere. There's a particular place where we go to almost every day. It's called Ala Lagoon, and the brother uh, um, Augustus, he's employing I want to say about a hundred people, between between seven between fifty to a hundred people comfortably, and those people that's been with him, some has been with him for ten years, and more. And those people are not going anywhere. Why? Because now there's a dependency that he's created because those people know this is how I'm going to take care of my yeah, family. Yeah, he's providing them opportunities, you know. So, like, you know, he's providing them great opportunities where they're actually also able to, you know, uh, take their life to the next level. They're meeting people, you know, because again, it's a tourist destination. So they're they're actually create they're expanding their network, which is you know expanding their net worth too. So even the, even if they move on at some point, they always gonna be like, man, that if it wasn't for that brother, I wouldn't have been able to move up in life. You know what I'm talking about? Like so, like it's it's definitely I definitely want to say, um, yeah, it's it's it, I agree 100 percent that there's so much opportunity. And then in you actually connect, making those connections and creating those businesses, yes, you are going to be helping people to take their careers to the next level. And in exchange, they're going to bring your business value. Yep. And when I say they're not going away, they're not going away for life. Meaning, if they do have to leave, they would have done. They would have to do something wrong. You know, to to, to to get them to to get them to remove themselves, but if or, they or they grow because they you know people you know because they learn the whole, some yeah, some people yeah, do you, grow. You, want, you definitely want you definitely want your you know people to um to get better because remember I think it was who was it Zig Ziglar said uh you know he was like why would I want to educate my employees and then they leave. He said, why would you want not to educate them and let them stay? You know, so, so you well, want to so you, wanna, you want so you want to empower. And in that empowerment, some people do go on to grow. But then there's a loyalty. This is what, what I'm what, what I'm understanding from what you're saying. Even even those that might grow, you know, what I'm saying. And because you offered them opportunity and now they can actually grow and maybe they can open their own business like the sister. That they, opened they her own. Right. She opened her own establishment right next door. Right. So and you know what? My, but there's still gonna be like a like man. You know, there's still gonna be gratitude for what you've done. You know, as a you know whether you know African American or Liberian, open that business, opening that business and offering that opportunity. I mean, you know, I agree with you 100. percent But the only thing, I, the the only thing that I want to add on to what you're saying is. Uh, in America, if it's a, whether it's a, a Subway owned by an African American or a McDonald's owned by African American, Burger King, wh whatever the, the the franchise is, there are pe there are I've, uh, there are people that's working there and it's been there for fifteen years, twenty years, you know, almost there, there's, there's places that you you know that you know this for a fact that there's certain jobs where a person will retire. They they've been there since the time they got out of high school. And then, you know, now they're a senior and then they're retiring, being at that particular job. That particular thought process and mindset is here all, the, all over the place. So you go, you're going to have people that, that, that's so loyal and so dedicated. And the fact that they know that, okay, this is how I'm taking care of my family. You know, you, 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 your security, your, your business security is, is, is that much easier to make sure you, you keep your business thriving through this genera through this generational wealth that you're creating for you for you and your family and, and it's just like you know the same way Sears Roebuck Walmart have these people that's like wow I'm I'm, 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 I'm I'm I've been here for I'm been here I'm, I'm not going nowhere and 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 that could be that that could be created here and that's what, really what I wanted to convey to you guys because is it's, it's one thing to, to, to open up a business and don't know how you're going to keep it open but it's another thing when you, when you do hire some people that's cause a lot of kids are here to get out of high school to get out of college and you know they don't know what to do they, 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 that 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 knowledge that youth that zeal 
it is it, is it, is not being placed where it could be placed for it to develop and and possibly open up their own business or exactly. or or or, exactly. or or be there with you while you do developing your businesses, your franchises, and so forth. Exactly. I'm just saying it's a win win. It's an opportunity for it to be a win win. Agree. You know? Yeah. One hundred percent. All right, y'all. We appreciate y'all tapping in. We will be back next week. Don't forget, follow us on all social media platforms at Journey Home Festival and DM us and let's see how we can help you make the journey. Let's take it together. Let's take the journey together.